Welcome everybody. You are listening to the Omni Channel podcast, a podcast from digital marketers to digital marketers. I'm your host Dominique Legrand and my mission is to help fellow marketers and entrepreneurs to grow their businesses online. So buckle up and let's get started. In today's podcast, I had the amazing Brian Mills with me, and he's helping coaches to build 20k a month businesses, only working 10 hours a week with very easy plug and play funnels and emails. And if I have to say one thing about Brian is that he is a master of automating, optimizing, and He really, really blew me away with how he likes to streamline processes instead of making everything and doing everything manually. I have learned so much from our conversation. I really hope that it's going to be just as useful as it was for me. Thank you so much, Brian, for coming. We can talk about that exactly because, first of all, I love how your offer is specific. Uh, There is clear goals. There is clear value and there's a time as well. You know, you said it's like a 10 hour a week coaching business. So um, do you mind just walking me through um, your offer and what, like, how did you come up with it? And what's your thought process behind it? The, the offer itself is, is geared towards mainly a lot of coaches are getting like pushed towards organic marketing. Aren't they? Like you have to do organic, you have to do organic. Um, and the, the, what they're doing is they're trading time for money. So you pick one, don't you? You either spend money or you spend time. Now, what people aren't doing is they aren't building businesses anymore. So even though it's a coaching business, a lot of people end up with a self-created job. And what I mean by that is the obviously get rid of the day job or it's still a side hustle. And they end up working more hours on their coaching business rather than actually building a business. So they become employed to their own job. Mm-hmm. So I went through this myself and I I ended up with burnout. Like it was ridiculous. And I, I remember f- by following the strategies my, my mentors had taught me, um, my head literally had no capacity for anything else. I mean, like even to the point of I'd go to a, I'd go to the fridge to decide what I'd want to drink, eat or drink. And I couldn't make that decision because the, I was following a system that completely burnt me out. So um, I remember t- taking a step back and um, it, it, it just went to a point of like, if I don't work, I don't earn money. I was like, and this, I was like, that's not business. I was like, I may as well go back to work. So I, sat, I took a step back and it was all about leverage. And it was a case of there's so many systems in place that people don't actually teach you. Um, and it was all about implementing those systems in place. Like you see all these coaches go, like I've seen loads of coaches say, um, like, what's the, like, hey, build a coaching business with no funnel, no ads, no no content, no emails. Yeah, no, I see like, them all anything. the time. I'm like, oh my God, it's just, <laughs> that's insane. And it's just like, what are you actually doing? Um because basically all they're doing is teaching people to slide into DMs and try and sell something from there. But what they're doing is they've literally, the people who buy those type of products, they may as well buy the hamster wheel and set it up in their house, their big human hamster wheel, because they're never, ever getting it off. And the key to actually running a business successfully is all about systems. So I've managed to get it down to between, so we take people through a three-step process. Mm-hmm. So we go, it's processes, automations and then manual leverage and we can't i don't want to train on it the other day you can't jump straight to manual leverage without sorting out the the without sorting out the, the bottom two um, and that causes a, a, a real issue for people who try to just go straight into outsourcing and because the because everything else isn't sorted they end up with a, a problem of like they're just giving people rubbish jobs to do and they're not doing it efficiently, they're not doing it successfully, which ends up causing more problems for them. So they don't successfully outsource. So it's all about mapping out the processes first, then looking at everything and find the way you can automate because it's surprising how much you can actually automate in your business and then outsource the rest. 
And by doing that, you actually create a business rather than a job and you're able to work a hell of a lot less and then focus just on the business elements, the stuff that makes $3,000 rather than $3. Mm-hmm. Uh, how long would that process take working with you from beginning to finish? So what it does is it takes, um, I work with my clients for six months. Um, mm-hmm. We should see good results from three. But what I found in my or in my journey is all these three-month programs, you come across what a spike in your business. So because you're working with someone, you're accountable to someone, you end up with a spike in your business of growth, which is actually fantastic. And that spike comes just around the time you're probably about to leave your mentor. So between month two and month three, you get your best spike in your business, which is fantastic. Honestly, I'm glad that happens. But what then happens is a case of you end up actually leaving your mentor at that time period because that's what they paid for. And you're then on a constant decline or inconsistencies and it's not, creating the, the, the long-term stability for your business. So I wait, what I do is obviously we should get the results in three months, but I stay with you for six to make sure everything is working as it should be rather than, so we're looking at long-term rather than short-term. Mm-hmm. Um, so what are the, um, obviously, if you guys are doing plug-and-play funnels and emails, uh, we can talk more about that as well and like the tools that you teach and provide to these coaches. Um, but um, what is the initial investment when it comes to obviously automating the, the inconsistency is by, I, I, I believe it could be by building a funnel for them or helping them come up with a funnel to generate those reoccurring clients. So how much the initial investment would be for a coach to, to get to where they want to be, which is a 20K, what you are saying? So in terms of what else would you have to pay for outside of the mentorship? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay, so what we do is you've got obviously a funnel building software. Then to show that's about like $97 a month. Mm-hmm. You've got an email automation software. If you're starting out, you're probably looking at about $15 a month. A scheduling tool, you can use Calendly, which is free. I use Schedule once, um, which is about $15 a month. And then outside of that, oh, Zapier. So, so to connect all the dots, um, I think I pay about $40 a month ish for that. And then also, outside of that, everything else is free. Um, I don't use Pipedrive. I use Trello um, mm-hmm. for my CRM. And I use a couple of that with a Google Sheet and Zapier. And I've got all the data I need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I guess uh, just circling back to my initial question. So you guys are essentially um, through this, uh, you said six months to period, you guys are taking through uh, coaches of a learning curve when they are provided uh, with a business plan essentially to what they they should do in order to become a business rather than individually trying to um, find people online. Uh, Why did you decide to work with coaches specifically and why did you pick this niche? So I picked coaches mainly because I went through that journey and went through Mm -hmm. that pain and I have I do have a corporate background as well. Um, so I could have picked different niches that I've worked in in the past, but um, especially a lot of industries that I've seen who have very, like the exact same problem. But I worked through the coaches because it, it's a case that I, I, I've been there, I've been through that path, I've been through that pain, and it's hard. And as a coach, as a, an online entrepreneur, it's a very, very lonely place, um, especially when things aren't going well. And I, I wanted to be there in the, in the community to support people and let them know they're not alone, but there is a better way of doing things. The problem with most mentors is they teach you one of the four corners, which is like, so I've got a four corner model. Then, so the four corners are marketing, sales, operations, and delivery. And nine times out of 10, you're only being taught the marketing element mm-hmm. and not being taught the rest. So you're literally only being taught how to be a freelancer Mm-hmm. rather than a business owner but we all got into business for the exact same thing we want more money we want more freedom which money brings the freedom what we don't want is we don't want to be tied to our job or tied to our business um, so i worked with them specifically because um, 
obviously it's a it's a huge industry. Obviously, there's over what six million coaches in the in the whole world, and a lot of them are being taught basically how to have another job. And I, I wanted to make that change for them because they didn't they didn't get attracted to this just to have the job. They got attracted to get out, and I, I want to help as many people get out as possible. Uh, do you see that? Uh, what are the requirements for you, first of all, to to be able to work with a coach? Like, do you have some prerequisites? Um, can you are you taking beginners? Uh, is it someone who already has an established coaching business? Like, do you have any uh, pre qualifications before they enter into working with you? So, what we usually do is we usually take coaches who have sort of gone through this pro- this mentorship process before, and mm-hmm. um, so they've gone through the. And so they've got some marketing elements to them, mm-hmm. um, but what they don't have is clear systems. So we try to take coaches who have, who are already on this journey. We do have a program specifically just for the start the start of coach, um, which doesn't go into as much of the, the system side of things. It goes into the the foundation levels. Um, so we do have that element there. If obviously if the beginners come through and obviously want want to build those systems from from day one. Um, but yeah, we're looking for coaches who are sort of inconsistently hitting between three and seven k a month. So they're hustling like crazy. They're in the DMs eight hours a day, probably creating content in front of their camera, like just constantly in that grind. And it's getting and because they've bought a program in the past, which was build a business with no funnels, no website, no emails, no money, no nothing. That is the reason they're stuck in those problems. Um, so we're here to get them out of the maze, show them the path, and then put them back in and let them run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, what do you see um, besides that? Um, I think this whole marketing world of coaches, they really focus on content marketing a lot and, and naturally attracting clients. Uh, what is your client acquisition process for your own business? Because I see you have so, podcasts, I see you post all the time. Um, can you just walk me through about the, the client acquisition process for you, for yourself? So our Facebook group is one of, one of our biggest assets in terms of generating clients. Um, so we do paid and organic strategies for that. We have the talk show to leverage other people's, uh, other people's um, lists, et cetera, and get traffic to that group. And um, that is our biggest the biggest asset in that respect. Um, so organic and paid strategies. Um, we are going to, and email marketing, um, we are going to look to extend out um, to LinkedIn um, and give, obviously, adapt the, the strategies we've got and put them on LinkedIn with a lot of automation as well. Um, content marketing, which is a hot, hot topic, and organic marketing is a huge thing because nobody, everybody's too scared to pay for ads when they start because they don't want to burn through a hell of a lot of budget but it's actually the fastest way to test and um, so ironically when people say like use ads to scale you should probably use ads as a very small budget to see what people actually click on and you can do your testing phase instead of a period of six to 12 months probably doing about two to three weeks mm. uh, and look how much time you've saved but people are too scared to do it which is totally fine so the other avenue is systemizing your content marketing which is crucial you need to get your content marketing system down to an hour a week. And there's a, there's a way of doing that in order to extract obviously your main content and put it into different pieces, et cetera, and leveraging the likes of the talk show. The talk show equates for a third of my content. And it's a case of I don't have to do anything because mm-hmm. the guests, obviously, all I have to do is book the guests and everything else is sort of done because of it. Yeah. So that equates to a third. Then my lives that I do, I do weekly live training for free in, inside my group. And um, that again equates to another third. I'm two thirds done. And I don't have to create new stories, new value posts, new engagement posts every day. Probably have to do about two a week. Mm, wow. That's so cool. Uh, you mentioned about uh, leveraging other people's list and other people's audience. How do you go into approach those people in the first place to be able to leverage their list and their audience? So usually when it comes from 
to obviously consume other people's content. So when I find when I see people a post about interviews that they've done or an interview pops up on my feed or a podcast, etc., I'll go and reach out to them because clearly they're open to the idea. Um, so we scope them out if they're a good fit for the show. I'll, I'll go speak to them. Go, hey, loved X, Y, or Z on on certain podcast. Um, if you're up for it, if you're still in podcast mode or talk show mode, I'd love to have you on the show. And then from there, we ask them to promote the fact that they're coming on this show, our show, the Marketing Mastery Talk Show. And then we we get to leverage their list in that way. And the the only we made a recent change that they can only access the talk show inside our group, which means they've got to come into our group now. So therefore, wow. it's it's a case of like that, that's how we get people in. Oh, I freaking love it. Uh, my second question would have been is just to ask you about, I just joined your group, by the way, but um, how, do you, how, do, how do you grow your group in general? Uh, but I guess you, you answered part of that question, but maybe you have other, other ways of growing your Facebook group. So as you said, like the, the three training or the three lives that we do a week and prom- constantly promoting those through our personal profile. So the personal profile is a huge asset. Obviously, you've got the ability to, to add up to 5,000 friends, et cetera, and you can remove the ones who don't really engage and add new ones. You've got loads of software to do all of that. And then using that platform and external groups to attract attention, then use, so you attract attention in the external groups which people, which is daft because people are paying up five to six grand thousand dollars just to get this exact strategy. <laughs> Obviously, make some noise in external groups, drag them to your personal profile, push them from your personal profile into your group. That's it. Yeah. It's, wow. <laughs> I've just saved you. That's just saved all your listeners five thousand dollars. Uh, have you ever run ads for for your group to be able to grow it, or are you just completely organically grew it? through the strategy no we originally ran some ads to grow it and and to fuel the fire when we first launched it Um, and then we're literally we've gone back into ads as well to to get more people through the door and just obviously this case of instead of uh, your manual outreach of like oh you have to manual outreach 50 people a day and you have to like connect with x amount of people it's just a case of between that running the ads to get people directly into the group with the freebie and then nurture them from there. So again, inbound people who are interested rather than pushing your people, pushing your stuff in front of a hundred people and hoping one person likes it. That's so true. Um, have you done organic outreach in your business? And what is your um, kind of a go-to strategy into reaching out cold audiences through DMs? Uh, <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. But there's... There is a need for it to a degree. Obviously, the more lead generation strategies you can have, as long as you don't burn out, obviously, it is crucial. Um, I actually use I use a software to, to to do the outreach for me with the initial messages. What um, is the software? Then, you have to tell me. <laughs> um, so I've actually moved softwares recently. I've been playing around with loads for years. Um, but the one that I'm currently at at the moment is ELM Messenger. Um, yeah, I think that's about 40, 47 to fifty-seven dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Um, that literally, I, I can add. I, I do. So I add the fifty people a day. I message fifty people a day, and see what comes back. And um, but I don't focus too much on even if they accept me and don't answer. I don't follow them up with a message because they've accepted me. That's enough. The fact that they chose not to reply proves either two things: they're either busy or they're not interested to talk to me just yet. And then I'll let my content do the talk and rather than, hey, 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 hey. So. <laughs> Spamming them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. So you were saying you use this uh, automated messenger outreacher uh, tool. Um, when it comes to crafting your initial messaging, like how do you start? Is it like a Tinder dating app style? Like, hey, how are you? Because honestly, I'm not answering those questions anymore. <laughs> And um, so what, what we've been doing lately, and you know what, it's, it's actually been really, it, it's working. Um, so, so we followed out to the, the, hey, how are you introduction, Sarah? Then in the exact same message, it's common, common connection. Like what, why, why am I talking to you? Like, especially in the groups, it's, hey, I've seen you in this group, I've seen you active in this group, etc. So that's a, a nice, easy way. Um, 
and then I'll do a lead question relating to that group. And this is where ALM is great because obviously you can cycle them off into different tags, into different groups, all that type of good stuff. And it'll be a case of, so for instance, um, with the ClickFunnels outreach, um, we do, one of my questions is, have you read the traffic, or have you read the, the Secrets Trilogy? Uh, or what's, what do you find the most useful about this group? Is another one. And it, because it's not a case of, hey, how are you? How's your business going? Yeah. And are you looking to increase your business sales and like next is because it's not like that, like it makes it a massive difference. And the response rate's actually not too bad um, for, for cold outreach. Um, because that, that equates and starts uh, the first phase of my three phase messenger sequence that allows not script sequence that allows people to actually come through to me and book a call. Um, so the purpose of the cold messaging is to get them to book a call um, or like what is what, what are you actually optimizing for at this point? Is it to check out your profile? Is it to join a group or is it to book a call? So the ideal is you go top to bottom. Though. So ideal scenario would be cold outreach and or warm we'll outreach, whichever, into conversation, problem identification, book a call. So that'd be avenue one. But obviously that would be a very small percentage of people who'd want to book a call. So mm -hmm. then you move to avenue two, which be, hey, obviously I've got some great training in my free, in my free group. That would be your second phase. Third would just be to continually grow and to grow the relationship and the, the value in your profile. And just eventually they will come back if they are a good fit. So you go book, try and go for book a call without being a sleeve bag. Then move into pushing them into the free group to with a value training that you've already done. So hey, actually looking at this, I think looking at your profile, I think with this, I've done a free training on this. I think it would be worth it for you, etc. Move them into the group because then you're going to capture the email anyway, nine times out of ten. And then failing that, just become a, a valued, a valued person in their network. And once you've given enough value, once you've took them on enough dates, they'll get they'll get married. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Um, so I was wondering, you said, you know, the first step would be to identify a problem and let, you know, um, get them to book a call with you. Um, I watched a separate training on, I think, Dan, uh, Dan's Facebook group. He has a high ticket. I'm not sure if you're in it. I think he's your friend. Uh, but in one of his Facebook group, he was talking about the fact that if you are trying to go for the kill, which is you try to get them to book a call, is essentially like you are trying to um, fuck them without using lubrication. This is what he said. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's yeah. his exact words. Um, <laughs> but um, so he was talking about the fact that the first time you interact with them, um, the first call should really be like a no sales call. And he was saying how uh, you should say that you should leave your credit card at home. And it's, this is essentially is to detect whether or not you can help solve them problems. Uh, what is your take on that? Um, I, I quite like the analogy, in fairness. Um, so obviously, the ideal goal is to book the call, which is which sort of fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I don't tell my clients to leave the, the credit card at home, but it's not a hard sell. Mm -hmm. It's a soft sell. It's a soft call to action to book a call only if we can potentially help them. And then on that call, nine times out of 10, I, I'll be honest, I do not close my first call. Not through a case of, hey, it's a case of, right, I do as much helping as possible. I do as much saving as possible. Um, and then a case of once I've given them actionable tips, once I've given them X, Y, or Z, and if they are interested in the offer, they, they will always ask me. It's a case of, so what is your offer? And I always get that question, what is your offer? Mm -hmm. like, like, how can you help me further? And that's when I'll present it. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be a case of, then from there, we'll book a follow-up call uh, and we'll probably close the deal on the follow-up call. But in between that, and this is where the systems are crucial. Like when people book a call with me, they get training, they get, they get taken to a free training page where they can watch free trainings. Mm -hmm. And then from there, the email sequences are starting. So a lot of people get the standard notifications, don't even Calendly or schedule once. Ours is actually a effectively a Seinfeld email sequence 
that comes through. So we've replaced the notifications with actual content. So we're giving them value straight away. So, mm -hmm. and they get those emails scheduled 24 hours before, five hours before, one hour before, those three content-based emails. And then from then, when they don't, obviously if we don't close this for sale first call, which is totally fine, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Um, they move into automatically, they move into the follow-up sequence and they start getting touch or emails again with more value, more training, more tips that are all automatic, it's 10 of them to obviously push them back ready for the call. So when it comes, if they've taken up and they've read or watched a lot of content ready for the second call, so the value has been given. And then it's just a case of, can we help? Do you, do you want us to help? Do you want to stay in the problem? Let's move forward. Uh, that's awesome, by the way. Uh, I was just talking to someone else uh, about email marketing and a lot of people have been saying that email marketing is dead. No one reads their emails anymore. Um, obviously, it's not true and it's cheap, it's free and you can provide value through email. That's so awesome that you guys do that. <laughs> yeah, say it's not dead. Don't get me wrong, the open rates aren't as great as what they were, which is totally fine. But you still, on a poor man's average, you still should be able to make a dollar per month per lead on your email list. So the bigger it grows, the more money you're going to make. And as you say, that is traffic you own. People can't take that away from you. Yeah, that's so true. Um, what do you use for the follow-up email sequences? Uh, are you using high level or what kind of? Active campaign. Active campaign, okay. Yeah, because I used that you move them to a follow-up sequence. So that I was thinking maybe that could be high level. Um, no, it's based off the trigger point. So once the schedule once is completed, um, so it, it marks as completed and schedule once after 45 minutes or an hour, however long the call is. And so that is the trigger point. Then I make the software wait 15 minutes to see if we have closed the deal. And then a different tag would be added in active campaign. If that tag isn't added in active campaign, the follow-up sequence starts but until the sale has been done. Mm, I see. Um, how big is your team, by the way? Do you have VAs to help you out with all of that? One, two, three, four, four-man team. Mm -hmm. Now, are they all based on in the UK or do you have them overseas? Various. So I've got people in the UK and then I've got people overseas. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I was just thinking because you are your systems are, I guess, once they built, it's it's all about automation. And I love how your approach is to essentially offer that automation. And from then on, it's easier to to grow the business without really having to put all of that work on. And once you start, once you get those trainings out that you said you have all these trainings through the sequence of emails, I think that is just a, really is a plug and play what you're saying on your on your Facebook page as well. Uh, so what is your biggest fuck up so far? Because there's a section in the podcast that talks about the biggest fuck up. So I would just I just wonder what's yours. Right. Okay. Where do we start? Yeah. <laughs> mm. That is a really tough question. Because like some of the high ticket mentors I've invested in, I've been like, probably shouldn't have done that. Probably shouldn't have got into debt paying that one off. Um, my biggest fuck up in business was probably um, in a different business, not my coaching business. Um, it was in a different business I'd run. And I was launching, I was running events. I was running um, networking events, specifically black tie. And the, I went straight to manual leverage phase and outsourced everything straight away. And without processes, without systems, without documents, without everything, I literally just gave it straight to a team. And I remember three months before the event, I was effectively in the event 10K in debt, so 10,000 pounds in debt, so about $17,000 in debt. Uh, because I, I was paying for, obviously, the, the, the hotel, the venue, the food, all of that. I've been paying for a team for three months. Um or three to six months, and that was literally, I remember looking at it, New Year's Day, going, my events in three months, what the fuck am I going to do? I was like, I've got nobody coming, I've got nothing happening, I was like, there's no money coming in, I was like, and I've now got to do this all on my own, because I can't afford my team. 
Mm. Um, so that was the biggest fuck up, being 10K in debt and committing to delivering um, a huge, huge launch event. Um, and I had to get rid of everyone, minus one person. I kept one person, and he is still with me today. Um, all these years later, he's still my top guy who, I, who so works with me. Um, and I, he was the only person I kept because he was the only person I could afford. <laughs> and because I can't do graphics, I'm not a graphic designer. I can't do tech. I, I wasn't a tech person. And I hustled like crazy and turned it from 10K, 10K debt into a £34,000, probably about $42,000 events wow that's okay so um if you had to give one advice to when it comes to business what would that be i guess to coaches let's see to coaches one advice one single advice mm, one piece of advice Free isn't always best. Mm-hmm. Now, what I mean by that is, as we were talking about earlier, when it comes to organic marketing, is so attractive to coaches because it's free. And that's why so many coaches do it, because it's free. They don't have to give up their time. Then a lot of coaches get attracted to build your coaching business without a funnel, without ads, software, email software, all that. So they're getting attracted to it because they think they're saving money. Which, which they're not. When you, obviously, the, the only thing you've got is your time. It's the only thing you can't buy back. So it's the one thing you have to protect with your life. And by giving up on softwares, emails, lead generation, all that type of thing, by handing it over and saying, no, I don't need any of that. Let me just hustle. You lose your time, you lose your sanity, and you, you lose your emotional health because you're going for the free options Mm -hmm. and it doesn't save your business long term now that's a really really good one that's a really good one um yeah just just like you mentioned the hamster wheel when you're just running in circles and you are just burned out and you try to grow your business and it's just not happening um do you think that the reason why people go for free is because of um of a commitment issue or why do you think that a lot of people are are trying to organically grow something when uh, is it like a shiny object syndrome is it like because they have magical thinking when they believe that's possible like what do you think is the reasoning behind that because the sad thing is people value their money more than they value their time mm. yeah that's so true that's so true <laughs> Um, I remember listening to um, Brian Tracy about this and he was saying that the top 1% uh, is actually um, working on hourly basis and they calculate their income on an hourly basis and everything else that's not making them X amount per hour, they are not doing it. They are delegating, they are outsourcing. And and I think even adopting that mentality when you value your time more and, and if you are going to spend one hour that's going to be either making you money or if it's not making you money, you're not going to do it. I think this is when a shift starts in your brain when you are like, okay, I'm not going to do waste five hours on uh, messaging people on Facebook waiting for a, you know, an answer. So um, I think that's definitely true that you have to value your time. What is next for you? We're not on here long. What is next? Um, What's next? Um, what is next do you know what I'd love to do I'd love to get and launch some retreats Mm. so have a weekend mastermind with like-minded people and hosting them because I'd love hosting I love speaking on stage and I love getting the right people together I think because of my background in events I think retreats will be next in terms of obviously finding a gorgeous location because we've got to enjoy what we do. So let's let's do what we do in a nice location with a beach and a sea view. Yeah, that sounds awesome. It's a, it's a bit like fire festival or 
<laughs> or the Tony Robbins type of Fiji retreat. Either or, mm. I would love yeah. to come. Oh, I'll go hundred percent. I'll uh, I'll let you know when it, when we get it set up. I've got connections in the Canary Islands, so and the, oh, those nice. islands are beautiful. And um, so that may be one of the locations that we go to. That's awesome. So, um, how can someone reach you if they want to work with you? So, best place to actually find me is in my Facebook group. So, the Coaches and Consultants Cool Kids Club. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the group is probably one of the best ways to find me the second would be to reach out to me on my facebook profile mm -hmm. uh, so it's brian mills brian with a y so if you type in the exact same name as the guy from taken and um, then you will find me, you will find me i can't believe that out of everything it's like that name that spelling everything i was like fuck it's like what a way to lose your seo <laughs> <laughs> Okay. The best two places to find me, Facebook group, Facebook profile. Well, I want to make sure to make to put both of the links in the, the podcast episode so people can actually click right through it and don't have to look at the IMDB uh, taken actors list <laughs> to find out how to spell your name correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that'd be awesome. And obviously we've just released in the group um, a training how to, how to create a 100% profit coaching business. So um, I've just done a, about a 45 minute training in there. So actually people get in there when they get welcomed into the group, I'll tag them in that training for them. Yeah. Just don't forget to approve my, um, you know, I just applied to your group. So that's, that's I'll, I'll definitely let you know as soon as we finish. <laughs> I need to see what you have going on. There. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Brian, for being here and talking to me. Um, again, make, I'm like sure to put all your links in the, the podcast episode. And yeah, it was really, really awesome to have you. And I learned so much already. I've taken mental notes and I'm going to uh, start with the automated messaging uh, software for Facebook. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. Just even if it's just growing your friends list for people to get eyeballs on your content. Golden. Golden. Amazing. Thank you so much, Brian. Have an amazing week and an amazing day. Um, it was lovely to have you. Cheers. You too, love. I'll speak to you soon. Bye, Brian. Take care. Bye. All right, you guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. Again, if you want to reach out to Brian and have him and his team help you systemize and streamline certain operations and processes in your business, definitely reach out to him. I'm going to make sure to tag him. Thank you so much, Brian, for coming. It was a pleasure to have you. And for you guys, I'll see you next week.